Hi guys and welcome to the next lesson. Now in this lesson we're going to mess around with the images. So let's first go to pexels.com and let's right click on the image and then create a copy of it in our clipboard. Now I go to studio and press command V to simply paste it. So let's first make sure that we have a good enough quality. Let's divide the height by two. And of course we have nice quality for the avatar photo. We're going to make it even smaller and uh, position it in the top right of our layout. And this is um, an example where I can show you how to use masks inside of Studio. So if you ever used any UI design software, uh, you're probably familiar with masks. And uh, you can apply, apply the mask from any shape. So I press O and I create an ideal circle with Shift pressed on the keyboard. Now I have to select both layers. So I have to shift, shift click on the pasted image layer. And now it's as easy as right clicking and selecting mask. So uh, you have a group right now and inside of this group you will find uh, the image itself as well as the mask, so the oval that we have. There is a little icon to the right hand side of this layer with the mask, so it, it indicates that's a mask and also you can use the mask and apply it with this little button um, in the top. So it doesn't really matter whether you have um, the photo on top or the bottom, uh, it will simply figure that out if you select two layers. Let me paste this photo once more so that I can show you how easy it is to manipulate the photo in Studio and how cool it's handled. So when you try to resize the photo by default, you'll see that you will always have the same proportions. So it won't let you mess around with the proportions of the photo and distort it. And this is pretty cool and it doesn't really matter whether you use this handle or that handle, it will always scale proportionally. So what if you want a different behavior? Well, it's possible and it's really cool if you unlock this little lock icon, this maintain aspect ratio icon. Now you can freeform uh, transform the photo, but it's useless if you you know mess around with um, the edges and the size. So instead of this, it behaves in a different way. It will let you scale some kind of a frame that's above the photo, and this photo will automatically fill in this frame. So this is really nice. And this is, by the way, the behavior that is very similar to the browser behavior of CSS attributes that you can apply to different containers. So it means you can, inside of Studio, you can mimic the behavior of this image in the browser while it's responsive. So really, really cool. And it will work best if you have uh, this uh, main object in the center of the photo. Sometimes you'll have to apply the mask, but then you also have some different options in the field properties of um, this container. So if you go to field properties and click on this little icon, you have the photo here, obviously, but the mode is set to fill right now. So what you can do is you can change it to fit. And now if you scale this container, it will always keep the entire photo inside the container and visible. So this was the second option and the third one is stretch. So basically you don't want stretch because it will distort your photo and you know, just destroy the proportion. This was the second option and the third is stretch. So basically you don't want stretch because it will distort your photo, change your proportions and it won't look good. So instead of this, uh, we're going to stick to fill probably, but you also can select the last option, the fourth one, and this is tile. Now you can manipulate the size and as you can see this will let you create um, basically some tiles inside of this container uh, made out of that photo. So for most of the time you'll stick to fill. Now let's delete this artboard and let me select the avatar once more. Now uh, I want to position this avatar correctly according to the grid in the top right corner and let's press command 2 to zoom in. Well in this case it's far more better to use mask than to use the container. Even if you have the container, you can round the corners of the container, obviously. But here we have a circular shape and it simply looks so much better. And it gives us a bit more flexibility of this, uh, about the size of the photo inside. Now let's create a rectangle and change the color to our main blue color, as well as let's make a radius for the corners. And this will present uh, the points for our user. So let me change the size to 10. This is the smallest, basically the smallest size that we'll use inside of our app. And uh, it will contain uh, the number of points for our user. So probably you have to 
check out whether on the device this will still look good but I think this is quite correct if you have this bold uh, font as well as quite a bit uh, of kerning between the letters so it's still readable. And finally, our layout is almost ready for uh, this home page. But what I'd like to do is select those elements and just move them a bit to the bottom. So just make those final touches with the layout that will allow, uh, allow us to have this better uh, balance between the elements. And uh, afterwards, we're going to create groups and also name the layers correctly. This is especially important for Studio. And this is simply because uh, we will use those group in animations and they will be sometimes automatically linked to each other so we have to be careful about the names and the structure so let me first create the groups out of those elements i shift click on book and calendar as well as this um, border and i create a group let's give it the name of btn-book now let's select instant pickup and this rectangle one command g and let's give it the name of btn-pickup and you can basically stick to whatever naming convention of the layers that you want. But here's one important thing and my recommendation in terms of Studio. So basically, we'll animate different things across different artboards. And those uh, layers and groups that will have the same name across those artboards will be automatically linked in the animation. So if you have 10 different buttons and each button has a different background, but then you will have the same name for this layer background, this can mess up some things. So it's always best to have different names. And for example, if you have different buttons, say button book and button pickup, uh, I'd recommend you to name the layers inside those groups so that they contain the name of the group first and then, for example, dash background. And uh, I'm also going to rename this Lamborghini. And this is simply our header. So let's give it a name of header. Now let's select the avatar and rename this group to avatar as well as let's select the points and background group it all together. This is points. And let's shift click on avatar to select both groups and group it all together into avatar dash batch group. Now in between the lessons, I'll also rename uh, the contents of the groups. Uh, but now I don't think it's necessary to show it. And uh, the last thing that I want to do is to um, reposition the layers and groups. And I usually do it so that I have the stacking order of the layers uh, that corresponds to the, to the order of elements from top to bottom on the artboard. Sometimes basically it's not possible. But um, yeah, I, I tend to stick to this convention. So. Uh, I also group together the details and now let's move it to the bottom and here we have the whole structure of our artboard. So yeah, this was not the most interesting thing to do in the studio, but this is really a nice background for the animations. So stick with me and I see you in the next lesson.